my name is Dr. Judith Gorski. I'm the Global Director of Scientific Engagement at Crown Biosciences. Thank you for joining me today as I discuss our FATSO NAFLD NASH mouse model. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or NAFLD, is a new consequence of the obesity epidemic. NAFLD is a consequence of sedentary lifestyle and high-fat diets, with an estimated prevalence of 30% in Western countries. It's associated with insulin resistance, obesity, glucose intolerance, and drug toxicity. It represents a spectrum of conditions characterized by macrovesicular hepatic steatosis in the absence of significant alcohol intake. The histologic patterns include simple steatosis without inflammation, and steatohepatitis, or NASH, with inflammation, fibrosis, and cirrhosis. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is a slowly progressive condition, as you can see in this histology figure, where the liver tissue and the histological slide represents a spectrum of varying severity of liver disease. It ranges from simple steatosis to coexistent inflammation with hepatocyte ballooning and necrosis. There can also be variable grades of fibrosis. Ultimately, the end result is cirrhosis with increased risk of hepatocellular carcinoma. Let me introduce you Crown Bio's Fatso Mouse. The Fatso Mouse was developed by crossing a C57 Black 6J with AKRJ mice and was selectively bred for obesity, insulin resistance, and hyperglycemia phenotypes, followed by inbreeding of more than 30 generations. The resulting Fatso Mouse model closely mirrors the human metabolic syndrome phenotype than conventional rodent models. They are polygenic obesity, even on a standard diet. They display rapid weight gain comparable to the DBDB or the OBOB. They do have an intact leptin pathway, and the males exhibit as early as 14 weeks of age hyperglycemia and insulin resistance. Most models of the type 2 diabetes have a monogenic mutation that is responsible for the initiation of obesity and insulin resistance. The two most common obesity-causing mutations are the leptin receptor, which occurs in the ZF rat, the ZDF rat, the DBDB mouse, or mutations in the leptin molecule occurring in the OBOB mouse. However, both leptin and leptin receptor mutations are rare in humans, and the models above are now more than 30 years old, meaning newer, more translatable models are required. Crown Bio, we feel the fatso mouse closely mirrors the human metabolic syndrome with spontaneous development of obesity, dyslipidemia, and insulin resistance. Shown in the upper right-hand panel is a body weight graph comparing our fatso mouse to a DIO mouse to a standard C57 black 6 mouse. And you can see the rapid weight gain over time as compared to the DIO on a high fat diet. Similarly, on the bottom, along with this rapid weight gain, we do see a propensity to have a greater body fat compared to the C57 black 6 standard diet, yet they are not as obese as the DIO mice become. The fatso mouse responds to anti-diabetic agents. The fatso mouse has been shown to respond to anti-diabetic therapies, providing a translatable model for evaluation of new agents. Glucose intolerance in the fatso mouse is reduced with rosiglitazone treatment at 14 weeks of age, shown on the left-hand side. As well, on the right-hand side, a treatment of semiglutide, which has been shown to reduce both food intake and body weight, reduces glycemia in this model. The FATSO NAFLD NASH model was generated by placing FATSO mice on a Western diet. We also included a 5% fructose in the drinking water. At eight weeks of age, 
Fatso mice were randomized based on body weight and glucose levels into two groups of 48 animals each, and the remaining eight animals were used to establish baseline parameters for the study. One group was placed on the Western diet and 5% fructose in their drinking water, and the other group remained on the standard Purina 5008 diet. Each month, eight animals from each group were terminated and blood was collected via cardiac puncture for analysis of glucose, insulin, liver enzymes, cholesterol, triglycerides. We also collected livers and performed histology. Shown here on the upper left-hand panel, the animals on the Western diet are in orange and the animals on the standard diet are in blue. You can see a rapid weight gain in the Western diet animals as compared to those animals that remain on a standard diet. On the bottom, percent body fat, you can see that these animals do become significantly higher in body fat as compared to their counterparts which remain on standard diet. Cholesterol levels are significantly increased, as shown in the upper right-hand corner. However, triglyceride levels were not significantly different as compared to the standard diet. This was an interesting finding. However, as I will show you in the next few slides, liver triglycerides were significantly different. Here are the fed and fasted glucose and insulin levels in the fatso mouse fed a western diet for 24 weeks of age. Fasted glucose levels in the left hand panel show no significant differences in the western compared to the standard diet. However, we do see in the fed glucose state that the animals placed on the western diet do not show as a significant higher hyperglycemia as the animals kept on the standard diet. Insulin levels were not significantly different compared from Western diet to standard diet in the fatso mouse. We did see as early as four weeks of age an increase in ALT and AST levels in the fatso mice placed on a Western diet as compared to the mice that main were maintained on a standard diet. These levels were maintained throughout 20 weeks by 24 weeks of age, we saw a decline in these levels, perhaps suggesting further liver injury. On the bottom left-hand panel, as I suggested in the earlier slides, serum triglyceride levels were not that much different. However, 
Upon examining liver triglycerides, we saw a significant elevation in fatso mice maintained on a Western diet as compared to their counterparts maintained on a standard diet. When we performed red staining, we revealed a progressive liver fibrosis induced by the high fat diet during the course of 24 weeks. Liver fibrosis stage was performed by a pathologist at study end in quantitatively image analysis of collagen from serious red staining. You can see the fibrous band formation indicated by the arrows. In performing the histological scoring, we refer to these two publications, Kleiner et al. and Jalouri et al., in order to quantitate the non-alcoholic steatohepatitis scoring. This slide here represents the longitudinal progression of NAFLD NASH in the fatso mouse on a Western diet. The Western diet animals are represented by the orange dots and the standard diets are represented by the blue. And these are the individual animal scorings. Steatosis on the upper left-hand panel, you can see was significantly higher by 16 to 20 to 24 weeks. Ballooning was evident at 16 weeks of age and significantly higher in 20 and 24 weeks of age. Fibrosis by 20 weeks of age was evident and lobular inflammation was evident as well, although there was a greater variability. Here we quantified the NAFLD activity score. On average, the Western diet compared to the standard diet showed a greater NAFLD activity score as early as 16 weeks of age. This was significantly greater throughout 20 and 24 weeks of age. In summary, the fatso mice have elevated body weight, body fat, and liver weight on a Western diet. We show elevated serum markers of liver injury, and they develop steatosis by four to eight weeks on a Western diet. Hepatocyte ballooning and inflammation was observed by 16 weeks on Western diet, and by 20 weeks on Western diet, the fatso mouse develops NASH and shows signs of fibrosis. In conclusion, our fatso model develops NAFLD NASH, an inherent mouse model of type 2 diabetes, when fed a Western diet and fructose.